So once you're done collecting data in field move, you go over to uh, the menus and then you press export. And then um, you can export all three options. So move and then the export button, the earth KMZ, as well as what's most important thing is that you export the CSV. Now you have to connect your iPad to your computer and iTunes will show up. You can let it sync and then click on the uh, iPad icon. If you go down to file sharing, you'll see field move here. And I had exported this project 14. You could see um, the date there and so what you want to do is then save this and you can put it on your desktop that's fine and it's going to export all of the data from that uh, project. Once you have it downloaded we're going to be using the CSV files line, localities, plane, and polyline to create our arc map. So you can copy these files into the folder where you'll be working to generate this map. If you've never worked in ArcGIS before, one thing that's important and not always intuitive is that you have to connect the folder that you're going to be working out of to ArcGIS in order to download anything. So the first thing you need to do is go to File, Add data. Now these are the folder connections that I have already uh, established. In order to get the folder that you want, press this connect to folder button. And for instance, if I want to connect to the folder A that I'll be working out of, you would press OK. Something that's important for ARC is that wherever you're making this map that you're okay with it staying there. So I think I tend to work on the desktop and then move things into a documents folder. But for ARC with these connections, uh, it's much better for you to place the folder exactly where you'll be working out of and exactly where you'll be leaving it so that you can find your data later. We want to get some base maps to put in ArcGIS so that when we download our geologic data, we know that things are in the right location. I go to the New York State GIS website for my work in the Adirondack Mountains. I'll provide this link below, uh, but each state has a database that you can access. Quadrangle that I'm interested in is Eagle Lake, so I went ahead and opened it. There's a, there's a bunch of different data that you can download but what we're going to download for right now is the one under the Department of Transportation. So you press download quad. Sometimes there's an error message here. If I refresh it, it generally will download. And so then you can take this folder, the I-50, and save it somewhere that uh, makes sense for your data. You can go ahead, open up uh, the map that you'll be working with. And we're going to add the base data first. So go to add data. Here's our folder that we, we downloaded before. So you can select the tiles that we want to, to import. Press add. Now we have to edit these individual TIFF files. So for I-50, HYD, we're going to open up by double clicking on it. And then we have this symbology tab. Go to unique values and press add all values. And where you see zero, double click, pick a blue color. This is going to be our lakes. And then on the one field, right, uh, press no color. And then press apply. Okay, and you can see the, the blue pop up there. We're going to go ahead and open up the I 50 PLAN file, go to Unique Fields, 
add all values. For zero, we're going to have the color be black. And for one, press no color, press OK. And for the I-50 topo, once again, to unique values, add all values. We're going to make zero a dark brown this time. The one no color. Press OK. And then if we zoom in, you can see that we have the topo lines. We have our ponds and bays colored in uh, blue. And so that's what we're going to start for our base map. Okay, we're going to add localities to our map using a CSV file. CSV files are exported from field move, so this is handy. We need to go first to file, add data. And then we're going to find the CSV file that we want to import. We click Add. I like to double check by opening the attribute table that it's imported correctly so I can tell that there is 179 lines, which is the number that I would expect. So that's good. We're going to right click and then press display xy data in the x field you can click longitude y field latitude we need to make sure that we put it into the right coordinate system so this is in new york so for us we want to put use this wgs 198 84. I've already favorited this and so if you have not you need to go to geographic coordinate systems, go down to world, open up world and then you can find WGS 1984 you press OK. So it's going to import data with this coordinate system and press OK and press OK again. So now we have something here called 2017 localities KS edited in this events and you can see these dots popped up. What we're not done we need to turn this into a shape file so we'll right click this events now go down to data export data and this is going to make our shape file you can see that by dot s h p you should give it a name that you're going to so you can know what this is so 2017 localities one and i can press ok and i want to add it yes all right so this is the data. Uh, it's now a shape file. So you can go down here and you can remove this. We don't need it anymore. And we still have localities. So now they're imported into ARC. The last thing we need to import is our polyline. And there's two files that we're going to have to deal with, the polyline and the polyline attributes file. The polyline attributes is going to get joined to the polyline file. But before we do that, there is a small glitch that needs to be fixed, which is there is a space over here next to data ID. And because of that, our... Um, Files will not join properly in ARC, and that will cause problems. So here we're going to fix it. If you press Command F, uh, if you're using a PC, Control F, 
it says find what? Here you add one space. You ask it to search by columns. And you replace it with nothing. You leave this totally blank, no space or anything. And you say replace all. And it says all done. They made a thousand replacements. And you say great. Then you close it. And now that space that was here is gone. So you can go ahead and save this. And make sure you keep it as a CSV file in the location that you are working in. And that is your first step. So you can go ahead and add the data for your polyline, like the other ones. So I'm going to add this. Display XY data. Longitude, latitude. It's the right coordinate system. WGS 1984. You can press OK. So we have the events on there. And we're going to turn this into a shape file. So data, export data. And this is the shape file. We can rename it something like 10 17. Nine. And press yes. Okay, so now we have what are going to be our contacts drawn, and they are in dots that are aligned, and the goal is to turn it into lines. So we need to open our toolbox. We go to it's under data management, tools, features, points to line. We open it up. We're going to pick the polyline file. You change this location where you want it so you make sure. And what mistake I made was I added a dash in the name. And for some reason, that symbol is not valid and it will crash. So what you have to do is just label it something without having a, a symbol like that in there. So I'm going to label it 2017 line. You can press save. The line fields, you're going to pick data ID. And the sort field, you're also going to pick data ID. And then you say OK. So this should work again. And there's our points to lines. And you can see we get rid of this. Those are the points. The next part is to add the attributes table to the line file that you've created. So we'll go back to 2017 line. You right click joins and relates, joins, and then you're at ask what field the join will be made on, and you tell it the data ID, and we're going to go ahead and find the attributes table associated with that data set, which is the 2017 polyline attributes. You add this, and now it's going to join uh, based on the data ID, which is what we want. And so you can double check that this is going to work by clicking join validation. It says yes, it's going to match. And so press OK. So now if we check, the, we have the attributes table and we have our 
um, information about each line. So we would see this is the rock unit. And so this is going to become important because now if you double click on the line file and you go to symbology, to categories, and you open up the value fields and go to rock unit, and then you said add all values. So now we have different colors associated with different lines based on what was labeled in the field. So you can go ahead and you can change these colors as you like and um, pick the thicknesses that you would prefer and you can apply and then you can see the colors change. So we're going to create a new shapefile um, based on this 2017 line. So if you go and right click data, export data, we're going to change the name to contacts and faults. And then press OK. And then you want to say yes. So now we have that here.